My name is John Watson. I am absolutely honored today <coughs> to be here to represent special education at Barnstable High School. I have the absolute best job in the world. My students with special needs are the, are the most severe students in our school, but they're the most genuine. They're the most real. Their efforts are real. Their failures are real. Their work is real. Their pain is real. Their angst is real. There's no malice involved. That's why my students are the best. No offense to any current Barnesville High School students out there today, but my students are unique. We might laugh today. Some of us might even cry. My colleagues at Barnesville High School <laughs> know that I cry because I have emotion. And a minute and a half, that's kind of a record for me right now. <laughs> but what do I want today? I want you to know, I want you to remember. I want you to remember me. I want you to remember what you watch. I want you to remember what I say, because you need to know. Your sons and daughters need to know. It's OK, don't be afraid. When somebody with special needs comes into your life or comes into your space, don't be afraid. It's OK. They're not there to bother you. There's reasons why they do what they do. Don't be afraid. They need, they need you to know. After today, we're going to start that ripple. And that ripple is going to go out. And we need you to be part of that ripple. If your son or daughter isn't here today, tell them to take our integration classes at Barnesville High School, phys ed and art. We take mainstream students and we take special needs students. We bring them together in the class, the same class, the same roster. They're on the attendance. It's not just go on and have art. It's not just go play kickball. They learn from each other. They learn about their needs. Who needs what? She needs this. She needs that. Okay? They learn from each other. Students with special needs are just like typical mainstream regular ed students. They have likes. They have dislikes. They have hormones. I'll tell you a little bit about that later. They have senses of humor. They have pain. They have wants. They have needs, just like you. They're different, yes, but I'm different than you. You're different than her. You're different than him. We're all different. Life would be boring if we were all the same. Your students, if they take our classes, they're going to learn about things like autism. Don't be afraid. It's just a word. Autism, Asperger's syndrome, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy. Autism and Asperger's syndrome is a social communication disorder. They have challenges that you and I just don't have. And they're trying to fit into society that dictates they be a certain way. That's their biggest challenge. I had a student with autism go up to a lady at the YMCA. No malice, no intent. He just went up and said, why are you so fat? Of course, we all kind of jumped back and said, oh my god. But we didn't know that he had learned about pregnancy. He learned about somebody who was having a baby. And of course, when you learn about that, you learn that they get, they get bigger, they gain weight. And he just wanted to know if she was pregnant. He wasn't trying to be mean. He just used the different words. Down syndrome, real quick, if you want to know about Down syndrome, Google Liam fist bump kid from ESPN and the Boston Bruins. Asperger's syndrome, it's under that autism, big spectrum, the umbrella. You might hear about the umbrella, the big umbrella. Asperger's syndrome is over here on the high functioning end of autism. Language is great. They can hold a great conversation, but then they, they can't read your face. They can't read your body language. They have difficulty making friends, those social interactions. We had a student with Asperger's syndrome in our gym class, and we were, we were on the treadmill having exercise, and one teacher goes, didn't I teach you um, when, you were, when you were younger? Oh, yeah, 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 uh, I remember you. You were a lot thinner back then. I know, and it's just like, what? You have to talk later on. You just don't say that. You know, and again, it's those pragmatics. It's those social skills that they need help with. Cerebral palsy, real quick. There's a tragedy back in the 50s and 60s and the 70s called Willowbrook. Some of you uh, older spectators today might remember Geraldo Rivera. 
you'll learn about a man named Bernard if you take our classes. He has cerebral, he has cerebral palsy. He was born. You notice it right away. It's a physical disability. Back then, you sent those kids away. Cognitively, Bernard was typical. Learned just like you and me would have if he was in a regular education. Shipped off to an institution because of his phys physical disability. If you take our art and our, and our gym integration classes at Barnstable High School, if you tell your kids to do that, they will get out what they get what they put in. If you're not from Barnstable High School, tell your principal that you want a class like this. Because we need to know about these kids. We need to know about their challenges. Because they need it. You become, a, you become a peer. You become a teacher yourself. We teach you how to teach them. And then you teach each other. You teach your friends. You teach your parents. You teach your grandparents. You teach your little brother. You teach your little sister. So then when you're out at dinner and some kid has a problem with the noise or the lights or the hearing or the, or the fan or the humming and has a hard time at not your average Joe's, you understand why. You be the teacher. You be part of that ripple. I'm going, to I'm going to try and uh, show a little clip today from YouTube. It's one of my favorite clips. It's about human behavior. I'm not sure if we're going to get it up there or not, but if we watch it, think about the four motivators of behavior that we talk about in our classes. We talk about attention getting. We talk about... Clearly attention getting behavior, right? And again, this is not special education behavior. This is human behavior that we're going to talk about. And this is what we teach. It's human behavior. So you can see human behavior starts at a really young age. And I'm not saying our kids are like toddlers. It's just my favorite video, OK? There's plenty of videos of older kids and teenagers and adults doing things like that. But that's what we teach. We teach about four major motivators of behavior. Attention getting is one of them, OK? Why do kids raise their hand in class? Ultimately, it's to get attention. You like attention. Some kids do things to get attention in a negative way. We all love attention. Anybody do Facebook out here? I don't. But why do people put pictures of their cupcakes on Facebook or say, Sally, get a new haircut? What do you think? Because you want their comments. You want that like to be touched on that screen. We love attention. Something called avoidance motivated behavior. Why do kids suddenly become ill when there's a test? Go to the nurse. We avoid it. Why do we procrastinate? because we have wanted to avoid something. The little boy might have been throwing a tantrum to avoid a bath or a diaper change, but I think it was attention getting. We do things for tangible reasons. We want something. We work to make money. We eat our peas and carrots to get dessert. We throw that tantrum in the grocery store aisle to get that candy bar. They know what they're doing. They know why they put the candy bars there at the checkout counter. And lastly, the di most difficult one to understand is because you can't really see it. It's sensory related, especially for our special ed kids. And this is what you guys need to know, is that they're wired neurologically a little different. Okay, Some kid who can't handle, I said, the lights or somebody being loud like a baby crying or the humming of the air conditioner or the wind going through their ears, they might put their hands over their ears to block it all out because their brain can't do it themselves, like you and I can. 
On the other hand, somebody might need more sensory stimulation that you and I just kind of create ourselves or that we're okay with, that we get enough of just in, nat in a natural way. But if a little kid can't create that himself or a student can't create that himself, they look for ways to get that. The brain says, hey, I need more stimulation. Get it for me. Okay, we all have two hands. We all have two ears. Every kid can do this. So this is why you might see, and I want you all to try this, so you know what they're experiencing. Everybody hum for me. Mm, very good, everybody can hum. Now, now we're gonna do that again, but this time, as you're humming, hum the whole time, and then cover your ears, and let go, and cover your ears. Ready? Mm, that amplifies that vibration in your head. That's why they do it. They don't do it to bother you at lunch. They don't do it to bother you in line at the ferry. Their brain is telling them, I need it. It's always available, two hands, two ears. I can hum. It's like a vibrator in your head. That's why they do it. They need you to know. So what do I want today? I want you to remember me. I want you to remember me, my ugly blue shirt. I want you to stop me on the sidewalk and say, I remember you, you talked about TED, or you were at that TED talk. You talked about special ed. I learned a lot about that. I'm my family's expert. Whenever I see something in the, in the community or somebody's doing something a little different, I can explain that to my family. I can tell my little kid about that. That's what I want from you today. I want to be remembered. Because they need it. Be that ripple. Thank you.